One fact for every city and town and Pokemon. And this video is sponsored by Raycon, but we'll get into that in a bit. Let's do this. Pallet Town. The technology guy who first appeared in Pallet Town has made an appearance in nearly every main series Pokemon game, even briefly in the Pokemon Evolution short. Viridian City. On Route 1, there is a Viridian City Mart employee who gives a player a potion as a free sample. But in the original games, the Viridian City Mart doesn't even sell potions. So this guy is straight up false advertising. Pewter City. In the Hoenn arc of the anime, Roxanne misses that the Pewter City Gym is a flagship of all rock-type gyms, implying that Brock and his family are the strongest rock-type gym leaders. Cerulean City. In the original games, after you beat Misty, you can skip Route 24, 25, and SSM by training over a Pokemon that knows cut. But in the remakes, Gay Free caught wind of this and replaced the tree with a Slowbro instead, which is pretty funny. Vermilion City. In the Adventures manga, Vermilion City was completely decimated by a hyper beam from Lance's Dragonair, just because the city was blocking Lance's view. And for context, in the original manga, Lance was the main villain. Lavender Town. In the Johto games, the Pokemon Tower was repurposed into a radio tower, with the graves being moved to a house in Lavender Town known as the House of Memories. And some graves replaced the secret chambers that only Mr. Fuji can access. I wonder which Pokemon are buried in there. Celadon City. Celadon City has a university, though in the game it's not accessible. It has appeared in two different mangas, Bibish in the anime, and was the name for the 1998 giveaway called the Celadon University Hypertest, where the magic up with the move Dragon Rage was given out. Saffron City. At one point, the Fighting Dojo was the official gym of Saffron City, but it lost all official privileges as a result of Sabrina starting a superior gym with Psychotype Pokemon. Fusia City. In Fusia City, there is a zoo, and if you look closely, you will notice that the fossil Pokemon you didn't choose at Mount Moon will appear here, implying that the super nerd probably either sold or donated his Pokemon to the zoo. Cinnabar Island. In the Johto games, it was shown that Cinnabar Island was destroyed by a volcano eruption, reducing the population from 33 to 6. And before we continue with the rest of the towns, I want to give a shout out to Raycon for sponsoring this video. Yeah, the Raycon earbuds have premium audio at the perfect price point, so you can build great habits without breaking the bank. Uh, wh why do you have electric tape on your ears? Because I have no ear holes, okay? I have to tape the earbuds to my ears. Well, anyways, yeah, if you're a human, these are the earbuds for you. Because not only do these earbuds have tap functions and noise isolation, but they also have an awareness mode, which allows you to be aware of things when you're listening to your favorite podcast or music. Like many of me over here having an existential crisis. How am I even hearing right now when I don't have ear holes? What is this black magic? Ha, ah, so soothing while I listen to Linkin Park. And if I want to play the next song, pick up a phone call, or even change the volume, all I gotta do is tap. And if you're still trying to find an excuse to buy these, think about traveling, exercising, walking your dog, or even listening to your mini plush doll become self-aware. These are all great uses for your Raycon earbuds. So if you're ready to buy something small with a big impact, click on the link down below in the description. And if you use my link, buyraycon.com forward slash Dobbs, you will get 50% off your first order, so it's a pretty good deal. And I gotta give a big shout out to Raycon for sponsoring the Dobbs Nation. Appreciate it, guys. And yeah, with that said, let's get back into the video. One Island. One Island is home to the Pokemon Network Center, a machine that allows a player to trade with distant regions like Hoenn and Or, which I guess technically makes the Or region canon to the Pokemon world, and even Shadow Pokemon. Two Island. Two Island is a trading post for several foreign goods, like Moomoo Moo Milk from the Johto region and Lava Cookies from the Hoenn region. Three Island. Three Island is a town that's been nearly taken over by the Kanto Rider Federation, a gang of bikers who have been shown in the Johto games to have committed several crimes. Four Island. Four Island is the hometown of the Elite Four member Lorelei, and every 25 times, up to 200 times the player enters the Hall of Fame, Lorelei will add new dolls to her collection in her home, which in total would be 14 new dolls. Five Island. The southern part of Five Island is home to the Memorial Pillar, where an NPC has built a gravesite for its deceased Onyx, Tectonix, and someone drew a funny comic of how they thought the Onyx was buried. Six Island. Six Island is home to one of the weirdest locations in the Pokemon world, Dotted Hole, which gets its name from the braille written on the ruins door. Seven Island. Not only is there a move tutor who teaches your Pokemon Swords Dance on Seven Island, but there is also a man with a Chansey who will heal your Pokemon by making them do a dance. So there's a lot of dancing going on in this town. Newbart Town. In the Nintendo Space World demo of 1997, Newbart Town was called Silent Hill, but was changed because of the horror game Silent Hill that released the following year. Cherry Grove City. Cherry Grove City is Johto's smallest city, which is pretty ironic since the location is based on Nagoya, the fourth largest city in Japan. At least in the anime, they show Cherry Grove for how it should be. Violet City. Sprout Tower from Violet City was planned to be a stage in Super Smash Bros. Melee, but was scrapped during very early development. Although Ryu's stage, Suzaku Castle could be an homage to what Sprout Tower might have looked like. Azalea Town. In the early stages of Gold and Silver, Azalea Town did not have a gym. This is probably because the Lake of Rage was planned to be its own town with its own gym instead. 
Goldenrod City. The radio tower in Goldenrod City was built where yet another ancient tower, like the Burnt Tower and Bell Tower, used to stand. And ho -Oh used to regularly visit it. And this is evident by the fact that the radio director found a rainbow wing. Ecritique City There are civilians in Ecritique City who claim to have personally witnessed the burning of the Brass Tower. But if this was true, then that means they are over 150 years old. Olivine City Olivine City is where the protagonists of the Hoenn games used to live, which explains why the player begins the game in a moving truck. They are moving from the Johto region. Cianwood City Cianwood City is one of the only areas in Pokemon where the player can get completely softlocked. All they have to do is release all their Pokemon who can learn Fly and Surf. And interestingly, in the remake, Game Freak added an NPC who gives the player a tentacle who knows Surf, so that they couldn't get softlocked. Mahogany Town According to the town's signpost, Mahogany Town is known as the home of the ninja. And clearly they hide themselves very well since none of them can be found here. Blackthorn City In the remakes, the falling Pokemon will have a different reaction to the Blackthorn City gym depending on their typing. Most types will feel nervous because of the heat, while fire types will feel enjoyment, an ice type will feel eager, and a dragon type will feel composed and confident. And if you have an Entei, it will just roar. Safari Zone Gate The Safari Zone Gate is considered to be a settlement in the Johto region, and is known for being a bazaar with multiple shops. Frontier Access The Frontier Access is also considered to be a settlement in the Johto region, and what's unique about this place is that there's a move tutor who can teach 51 different moves. Literoot Town The movie playing on the TV in the player's house in Literoot Town is the 1988 film Big, which has a famous scene of two men dancing on a giant keyboard. So I guess technically Tom Hanks is canon in the Pokemon universe. Oldale Town If you speak to the Mart Clerk in Oldale Town while your bag is full, he will glitch into the trees behind the Mart. So I guess the player having a full bag just kind of blows their mind. Petalburg City In the Petalburg City gym, Norman uses two illegal Slay King, which is pretty broken and illegal. Wait, that's illegal. Rustboro City There is a funny easter egg in Rustboro City involving an ace trainer who gives the player the flow stone. Because once the player leaves and comes back, the ace trainer will be replaced by a hiker, implying that he's gained a lot of weight since giving away the flow stone, which is an item that halves the user's weight. Doofer Town Doofer Town has a house that features Cerebi's fan-made Poke Earth map, which inadvertently makes his map or Cerebi himself canon to the Pokemon world. Slateport City If you don't have enough money to enter the Slateport City's Oceanic Museum during the main story, the receptionist will assume that you're part of Team Aqua or Magma and let you in free of charge, which is pretty funny. Mulvile City Mulvile City is apparently known for its old guys, because in the original games, every old guy NPC is located in the Mulvile City Pokemon Center, which is pretty random. Verdanturf Town In Verdanturf Town, there is a girl who says that she has lost her Shroomish, and if the player interacts with the sign after talking to her, an overall Shroomish will appear and run back to the girl, which is something that I didn't even know about. Fall Arbor Town Fall Arbor Town is the home of Professor Cosmo, Hoenn's second professor who is a meteorologist, and apparently he traded away his Salamence for a Soul Rock, just because the Salamence didn't look as much as a meteor like it did as a Shellgon. Laverage Town Laverage Town is known for its hot springs, and in the remix there are two separate entrances to the springs, one for men and the other for women. Yet, no matter which protagonist you pick, you're able to go through both of them. Nice. Fortree City There is an NPC in Fortree City who says that wild bug type Pokemon often fly into the windows of the Fortree City houses. And yet, in both of the adjoining routes, Route 119 and 120, the only bug type Pokemon is Sir Kid, who can't even fly. So this NPC is a straight up liar. LIAR! Lily Cove City After the player becomes champion, the Game Freak staff will visit the Cove Lily Motel in Lily Cove City. And you can find the graphic artist, the programmer, and the game designer who will also reward the player with a Poke Diploma after completing the Hoenn Pokedex. Moss Deep City The red and white rock in Moss Deep City sparked a lot of conspiracy theories back in the day. One of them being that if you examine the rock a number of times, it'll unlock the rocket and let you ride to the moon to catch Jirachi. But alas, it doesn't do anything. It's just a useless white rock, even according to the remakes. Pseudopolis City In the remake, Pseudopolis City received one small change. They placed a giant tree in the middle of the city that was supposedly gifted by AZ, the 3,000 year old giant from Pokemon X and Y. And you can also see the same flower held by Eternal Flood in the flower patch, which is a nice detail. Pacific Log Town Pacific Log Town is notorious for the silly NPC dialogue in which this player asks where are you from, and then gives you a yes or no option to reply with. So either the NPC was tripping, or there are actual regions named yes and no in the Pokemon world. Evergrande City The badge gate in Evergrande City is only coded to check to see if the player has the Knuckle Badge and the Feather Badge. So technically, if you exploit the game, you can challenge the Elite Four with only two badges. Twinleaf Town The player's room in Twinleaf Town is in the game's files of Legends Arceus, implying that there might have been a point in the game where you could play in the present day Sinnoh. Sanjum Town Sanjum Town's name was revealed before Diamond and Pearl were even released. It was said in the anime in the final episode of the Hoenn arc. Jubilife City This is concept artwork for Jubilife City from the early stages of Brilliant Diamond and Shining Pearl. 
Orberg City. In the original game, there's a boy in Orberg City who will call you a total noob if you don't challenge the gym, which is just hilarious. Floroma Town. Floroma Town is one of the most broken early towns in any Pokemon game, because in the remakes, there's an NPC who will nonchalantly gift you a Mew and a Jirachi if the player has save data from Let's Go and Sword and Shield. My question is, who is this person? Eterna City. The statue in Eterna City is supposed to resemble both Dialga and Polkia, and once you color it in, it becomes more clear. In the remakes though, they change it to look more like the statue from the manga, with Dialga and Polkia fused together. Hartham City. Hartham City is the only city in the Pokemon world where you can find human babies. Selaceon Town. In the original games, alphabet seals were available by showing unknown to a boy in Selaceon Town. And with these seals, you could write some pretty funny text on your Pokeballs. Vilestone City. The sign outside Vilestone City's game corner says, aim for the explosion of luck. And fittingly, if you're lucky enough to play 10 rounds of slots in a row, the lady at the game corner will reward you with a TM for explosion. Pastoria City. The people of Pastoria City love Krogunk so much that they made it their city's mascot, and made a statue in the Pokemart and a Krogunk face wall in the middle of the city. And if the player stands behind the wall, a wild Krogunk will appear and run to the entrance to the Great Marsh. Celestic Town. The shrine in Celestic Town is identical to the shrine found in Elix Forest in the Johto region. I wonder if there's any connection with Celebi. Kenilov City. It is confirmed that the Aether Foundation visited the Kenilov Library to get necessary info for creating Type Null. They were probably reading up on Arceus. Snowpoint City. Snowpoint City has an Easter egg where, if the player visits the city on January 12th, it will snow Diamond Dust, which is a reference to Janishi Masuda's birthday. Oh, and fun fact, I actually got to meet Masuda at Pokemon Worlds, and he was a pretty cool dude. Sunny Shore City. Sunny Shore City has a rock shaped like a Munchlax, but in the remakes, it looks like a Snorlax instead. Maybe the rock evolved or something. Fight Arena. All of the Rotom forms except for base are banned in the Fight Arena's Battle Frontier, for some reason. Survival Area. The cameraman who filmed the documentary seen in the beginning of the game, Search for the Red Gyarados, lives in this town. Resort Area. The resort area is the first and only town where you can find wild Pokemon of every level. And that Pokemon is Magikarp. Yes, that means you can find a level 100 Magikarp in this town. Jubilife Village. Jubilife Village has a local specialty food that was lost in time, with the food being the Jubilife Muffin. Diamond Settlement. The Diamond Settlement is adjacent to both the Diamond Heath and Scarlet Bog, which could have been a small foreshadowing for the next main series games. Pearl Settlement. The Pearl Settlement eventually developed into Snowpoint City. Navima Town. When you exit your house in Navima Town for the first time, a flock of Pokemon will fly away, and depending on the time, it'll either be a flock of Pidove or Wubat. Akumala Town. Akumala Town is one of the most unique trade NPCs in Pokemon, because after you trade her your extra drill, she will want to battle you, and in the battle, your previous extra drill will have the same nickname and moves that it had when you traded it. So technically, you can give the extra drill a silly nickname and the worst moveset possible, and then battle against it. Striaton City. There are Pikachu shaped hedges in Striaton City, but interestingly enough, Pikachu doesn't spawn anywhere in the Innova region, even in the sequels. So I guess this is the closest we'll see to a native Unovian Pikachu. Nacreen City. The museum in Nacreen City features some pretty interesting artifacts, like the Dragonite skeleton, which may imply that Dragonite is an ancient Pokemon, or the African mask, which is connected to the real world and possibly an African based region. Castilia City. If you go to the Game Freak building in Castilia City and talk to the sound designer, he will change the background music to the Team Rocket theme. So I guess his Game Freak employee must be a Team Rocket member. Nimbasa City. Due to how breeders are programmed in Black and White 2, you can get infinite rare candies in Nimbasa City. All you have to do is enter the big stadium, battle breeder Owen, get the rare candy, and then leave and come back. And there you go, no game shark needed. Anvil Town. Anvil Town is the first town in Pokemon that the player can't fly to. The only way to access it is to use the Battle Subway Station. And interestingly, Anvil Town is one of three towns or cities that isn't connected to any routes, with the other two being Four Island and Kalu City. Driftfell City. Between Black and White and their sequels, Driftfell City must have struck gold, or in this case, emerald, because several buildings and furniture have been decorated with emerald. Mistralton City. You can fly to the Nature Preserve from Mistralton City, and the Nature Preserve is supposedly located in an unknown region far away from Unova. Maybe we'll see it again in a future game. Icarus City. Icarus City is home to several villainous team members. In Black and White, the Team Rocket member who stole the machine part lives here with his wife and child, and apparently left Team Rocket after falling in love and getting married. A former Team Aqua and Magma member both live here, and also the very same sound designer from the Game Freak headquarters lives here. So yeah, he's definitely a Team Rocket member. Opelousas City. Opelousas City is vastly different depending on what game you're playing. In black, Opelousas City is very futuristic, while in white, it's very rustic. Lacunosa Town. The residents of Lacunosa Town live in constant fear of Kirim, because once nighttime arrives, all the citizens will be hiding inside their homes. 
Undella Town. In the Adventures manga, Undella Town was a test target for Getsis to freeze over, and this is what it looked like before and after. Black City. The sooner the player arrives at Black City after starting a new game, the more NPCs will appear, up to 45 citizens at a maximum and 12 at a minimum. White Forest. Repels do not work on Pokemon you can encounter in White Forest's tall grass, even though they are level 5. Aspercha City. Aspercha City is the only hometown that has a Pokemon Center and a gym, which also means the Pokemon Center in Aspercha City is the only center the player cannot fly to, since they always fly to their home. Flockacy Town. Flockacy Town is home to the only shiny gift Pokemon, which are the shiny Dratini and shiny Gibble. Verbank City. Even though Verbank City is home to the second gym in Black and White 2, it is the strongest gym in the Unova anime, since it took all six of Ash's Pokemon to defeat Roxy's 3. Lintimus Town. Sometimes the trading card game will sneak in familiar towns and locations into their art, like this number card that features Lintimus Town in the background. Humalas City. There is a lass in Humalas City who says his dress is comfy and easy to wear, which is a reference to the youngster in Kanto who says, Hi, I like shorts, they're comfy and easy to wear. Vanneville Town. The player's mom in Vanneville Town is a retired Rhyhorn racer, and her partner Rhyhorn lounges outside the player's house. Aquacore Town. There are two shops in Aquacore Town. One of them specializes in Pokeballs, but only sell regular Pokeballs, while the other sells quote unquote only the best potions, but only sells regular potions as well. Santa Loon City. Santa Loon City is very similar to Viridian City, because both of them have a gym and connecting forwards with the same name and through connecting routes, with one of the routes leading to the Pokemon League. Not to mention that Santa Loon Forest is almost a carbon copy of Viridian Forest and even spawned the same Pokemon. Lumio City. A lady in the Lumio City Pokemon Center confirms that Blue has visited there, and mentions that she greeted her with the word bonjour and said farewell by saying smell ya later. Camp Freer Town. Camp Freer Town is home to possibly the worst trade of all time. You could trade an NPC at Gyarados for a Magikarp, which is just silly. Silage City. The Steelix a player can obtain in Silage City via trade is nicknamed Thumper, even though it is impossible for that nickname to exist since the word hump is banned. Ambred Town. Ambred Town is home to the infamous item The Strange Souvenir, which was eventually revealed to be from the Alola region three years later. Geosinge Town. You can pose for a picture in front of the ultimate weapon and smile like nothing ever happened in Geosinge Town, which is pretty funny. Shallor City. There is an item called the Shallor Sable that Shallow City is supposedly famous for, yet there are none to be found in Shallor City, and you can only get one in X and Y by training it over from another game, which is pretty odd. Kumarine City. Kumarine City is the only city in the Pokemon world to be split into two separate sections. Lavera City. If you look closely at the clock on the tree behind the Lavera City gym, you'll notice that it has 13 hours on it instead of 12, which might be a reference to the Witching Hour or the Devil's Hour, when black magic or supernatural creatures are said to appear in their most powerful state. It is also believed that the 13th hour is when the Fairy Realm and Human Realm come together, which does make sense since there's a fairy gym here. Dendemil Town. It is impossible to go fishing or surfing on the water flowing around Dendemil Town, which makes you wonder what Pokemon may inhabit there. Anastar City. Every day at 8 p.m., the sundial in Anastar City will start spinning for one hour, and during that time, for the first 10 minutes, the city will have falling sparkles. Coraway Town. In Coraway Town, the player can find a message written by Professor Sycamore to his future self on one of the seats in the train station. Snowbell City. The map description of Snowbell City states that the reason why the city is so wintry is because of the cold air coming from the gym, which is pretty crazy because that means Wolfric is single handedly controlling the weather of an entire city. Kalud City. The Battle Mason in Kalud City is basically a carbon copy of the Battle Subway from Generation 5. Most Pokemon here have the same movesets as they did, and a lot of trainers say similar quotes. Iki Town. There is a Zygarde cord in Hollis House in Iki Town, which is pretty wild because this means that this particular Zygarde cube completely trusts Hala. How Oli City. In the sequels, there's a location called the Ultra Ruins, which is quite literally an apocalyptic version of How Oli City, where the Ultra Beast succeeded and taken over. Hia Hia City. Hia Hia City was founded by trainers from the Kanto and Johto regions, which explains why the Game Freak headquarters can be found here. And also, if you notice, every trainer in the city has either a Gen 1 or 2 Pokemon on their team. Paniola Town. There is an old man in the Pokemon Center in Paniola Town who will buy a random item for 5,000 Poke Dollars. But if you don't have an item he wants, he will immediately disappear for no reason, which is pretty random. Kony Kony City. Kony Kony City is pretty creepy because there are wild diddles disguised as humans in random places, and all of them perform jobs like actual humans, like being a police officer or giving massages. Mali City. The Katonia Gym in Mali City is a tourist trap, because if you read the statues at the entrance, it will say that it costs 5,000 Poke Dollars for adult males, 3,000 for adult females, and 1,000 for children. And then for Pokemon, for some reason, it's free. And as we know, gyms are supposed to be free anyways. Tapu Village. Tapu Bulu destroyed Tapu Village once it found out the people who lived there built a thrifty Mega Mart on sacred grounds. Now the place is a ghost town, like literally. 
Potown. In this shady house in Potown, there's a small chance to encounter a deli bird who will briefly come down the chimney and into the fireplace, alluding to be Santa Claus. Seafolk Village Seafolk Village is home to the only trainer in the main series game to use a shiny Pokemon outside of the battle facility, which is Sightseer Marcus and his shiny Execute. Postwick Postwick is the least populated town in the entire Pokemon world, with a population of only 5 people. Wedgehurst Wedgehurst's name is referenced to golf, with Wedge being a type of iron club and Hurst being a wooden hill. Motostoke Motostoke's gym leader, Kabu, is from the Hoenn region and is likely related to Flannery. Turfield The geoglyph at Turfield is not the first appearance of Gigantamax Toxicity. His first appearance was actually on a poster in Game Freak's office in Hiahia Hia City. And here's a close up to what it looks like. Holberry. Holberry's band, the Maximizers, are most likely inspired by the Beatles, since they can be found in Holberry after completing the game, and Holberry is supposed to be based on the town Liverpool, which is where the Beatles are from. Hammerlock. There is a trainer in Hammerlock who almost successfully pulls off the fear strategy. He has a level 2 cottony that's holding a focus sash with the move Endeavor. And if you didn't know, fear is an acronym for Focus Sash, Endeavor, Quick Attack, and Rat Attack, or freaking evil annoying rodent. Stow on side. If you take a close look at the street lamps of Stow on side, you'll notice that they resemble Chandelier. Stow on side even has pillars that resemble Clay Doll, which is a cool detail. Balanlia. Balanlia's gym leader, Opal, is probably the oldest gym leader in all of Pokemon, because when she asks the player her age, the correct answer is 16, while the other option is 88, and that's pretty dang old. Sir Chester. Sir Chester's Japanese name is Circus Town. Spike Muth. 20 years after the debut of the Dark Typing, Spike Muth became the first Dark Type gym in Pokemon, and is currently the only one that exists, which is kind of crazy. Winden. There's a boy in Winden that says a nearby glaring Mr. Mime is named Marcel, which is a reference to the trade of Mr. Mime from Red and Blue. Freezing Ton. There's an ugly sweater that the mayor of Freezing Ton will give you upon entering the town, and the sweater actually became official Pokemon merch that was sold in Japan. Cabo Poco. If you visit your mom in Cabo Poco after getting three badges and after becoming champion, she will give you two sandwich recipes. Los Platos. On the map, Los Platos is marked as Los Platos East, even though there's only one Pokemon Center and there's no Los Platos West. Maybe originally this town was meant to be bigger, but was scrapped and this is just leftover data. Mesa Goza. In the Academy at Mesa Goza, you can actually find a book named Galar A History, which happens to be written by Sonia for Pokemon Sword and Shield. So, this might confirm that Scarlet and Violet takes place years after the events of Galar, where Sonia has become an established professor. Cortando. There are swimming pools in Cortando, and if you look closely at the tiles on the bottom of them, you will notice they have patterns that look like water tiles from red and blue, which is pretty cool. Artisan. In the eastern part of Artisan, you can find some of Brassia's artworks called Heterarchal Loop, Meditative Seat, and Paradoxal Popper, which happens to be all names for secret base decorations in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. So, that might mean that Brassia's might have been the designer for these decorations. Lavincia. An NPC in Lavincia confirms that the entire city is powered by Tadbull. Cascarafa. You can steal the gym leader's wallet in Cascarafa's gym, which I think might spark a new speedrunning category like Ditch Bill, where you speedrun to the point where you help Bill turn back to a human, but in this case, you don't. Porto Marinada. Porto Marinada is known for its auctions, and some of these auctions sell some pretty valuable items that belong to legendary Pokemon, like Zashi's Rusted Sword, Dialga's Adamant Orb, or even Arceus's plates. This might be the richest black market that we've ever seen ever. Medley. There is a poster of the three new legendary Pokemon, Okie Doki, Monkey Dory, and Pheasanty Pity, outside of the Medallis restaurant, which is a nice deep peek to the upcoming DLC. Monte Venera. In every Paldanian city with a gym, there is always at least one person standing or walking outdoors with a Pokemon that has a type that matches the gym's type. All of them except for Monte Venera's gym, which has a person with an ice type Pokemon instead. Zapapico. There is unused game data for Zapapico that contains an interior of a house, and this is what it looks like. Alfernada. The Alfernada's observatory has the old school mini sprites on the side of it, which is pretty awesome. Phoenix City. Apparently this random dude was the 1 millionth visitor of Phoenix City, which means a lot of people have visited here. Pyrite Town. Pyrite Town is probably the most rundown town in all of Pokemon, even more rundown than Po Town. Agate Village. There is an NPC in a gate village who devolves her own Pokemon, because when you rematch her in Gale of Darkness, her Poochiana will have evolved into Miniana, but when you see her in the overworld afterwards, her Miniana will have devolved back into a Poochiana. The Under. Even though the Under is unaccessible in Gale of Darkness, the location is still in the game's code, and it's entirely possible to get there by hacking. Gateon Port. The reason the city is called Gateon Port is because it sells items that evolve the main character's Eevee, hence the Eon at the end. And interestingly, for the Umbreon and the Espeon, they sell the Moon Shard and the Sun Shard. White City. White City is the main hub for Pokemon Stadium 2. And let me tell you, the city probably has the hardest Pokemon League in any game, because the Pokemon that the gym leaders in Elite 4 have are just insane. 
Rhyme City. Detective Pikachu takes place in Rhyme City, and as of now, we do not know which region Rhyme City takes place in, but we do know that it's in the same Pokemon world, since the Alola region is explicitly missioned. Fall City. In the post game of Pokemon Ranger, the fountain in Fall City is named after the player, so you could totally give it a silly name like Poopy Face. Ringtown. You would think that Ringtown is named after the way Pokemon Rangers loop their rings around Pokemon, but no, it's named after the season Spring, since all the cities in Fiore are named after seasons. Summerland. Every town in Fiore has a ranger base with his own leader. In Summerland, the ranger leader is Cameron, who literally calls a player hot, as in they're sexy. Windtown. More than half of Windtown's population are Pokemon Rangers. Vaintown. Vaintown is home to probably the strongest human character in the Pokemon games, Big Bertha, because in the story she is shown carrying two machine units, which normally require at least four people to carry, each. Chikol Village. No one from Chikol Village is actually from Chikol Village, since it's a new town, so everyone there had just recently moved there. Pule Town. In the middle of Pule Town, there is a tower known as the Altru Tower, which is also known as the Angel Tower in Japanese. And what's ironic is that this tower hides the main weapon of Team Dim's son, and the people within are outright villainous. Boil Land. Boil Land is a volcanic town, but once per year the townspeople celebrate a snow festival and bring ice-type Pokemon just to make it snow. Shiver Camp. The only thing interesting about Shiver Camp is that there's a research team that studies ice-type Pokemon. Yeah, it's a pretty boring town. Haruba Village. You can create an oasis in Haruba Village, but this can only be done in the post game, so it's an easy feature to miss. Kokona Village. Kokona Village might have been the inspiration for Iki Town, since both have four houses, a special ritual platform in the middle of the town, and are located in a tropical setting. Tilt Village. Tilt Village is home to Hocus, a villainous magician who owns an unusually large crowbat. Aqua Resort. The protagonist from Shadows of Almia has a grandmother who lives in Aqua Resort, which is something that no other protagonist has ever had. Well, officially. Pokemon Square. Pokemon Square is home to the second wisest Pokemon in the Mr. Dungeon world, which is randomly a wish cache. And if you're wondering, the wisest is a Zatu. Treasure Town. This is what Treasure Town looks like from the ocean, which looks pretty epic. Shaman Village. Shaman Village is home to seven Shaman, but there are eight houses there. So I wonder what happened to the eighth Shaman? Did it hop into the universe where the main series games take place in? Pokemon Village. Pokemon Village shares the same name as an area in the Kalos region, a place where Pokemon live and hiding from people. Post Town. The most famous feature of Post Town is its view of the Rainbow of Hope, which only appears when the overall attitudes of Pokemon throughout the region are hopeful. Serene Village. Serene Village's name means calm and peaceful, which is ironic considering this is the only hometown in which you live with a twisted villain. Lively Town. Lively Town's first name is Lowellville, which is actually derived from the internet slang LOL. Barum Town. Barum Town is located on the Air Continent, which is the same continent that the original Mystery Dungeon games take place in. Capum Town. Capum Town provides access to the Mystery Jungle, which is a post-game dungeon where you can find Mew, which I guess is his natural habitat in this universe. Sara Town. Randomly lying around in the middle of Sara Town is a gin bottle, which is an item that can summon Hoopa's unbound form in a dungeon. No Town. Remember earlier when I asked if there was a yes or no town? Well, it turns out there is a no town, and this is it. Toy Town. Toy Town is the first town you enter in Pokemon Rumble Blast. Easterly Town. You can give passwords to Amuna to unlock Pokemon in Easterly Town. Westerly Town. Westerly Town is the only town in Pokemon Rumble that is inhabited only by Generation 5 Pokemon. Talk about Generationist. Northerly Town. Northerly Town has a special telescope that lets you see your Mii character looking down at the town from the outside world, which I guess confirms that Mii's are canon in the Pokemon multiverse. Axeltown. Axeltown probably has the most overpriced move tutor ever, because it teaches you Draco Meter for 5 million Poke Dollars. Puzzle Town. Puzzle Town is a city that Pokemon Puzzle League takes place in, which is in fact one of my favorite Pokemon games of all time. Mintel Town. Mintel Town is a city that Pokemon Channel takes place in. And finally, Sintra City. Sintra City is the largest city on the island of Pasio, the region that Pokemon Masters EX takes place in. And there you go, one fact for every town and city in Pokemon. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Hey, and if you enjoyed this video, you should check out my one fact for every protagonist in Pokemon. I literally went over all of them, from the manga, the anime, the games, and even spin-off games, so go check it out. And don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell.